Hello, I am Donnie, and I am the cute one. And I am Chelsea, and I am the cute one. TGIF, cuties. TGIF. October's over. Ooh, it's November. I'm nervous, but it's okay. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's yeah. fine. <laughs> this week it is. This week is fine. Well. We're fine. We're fine. We're great. <laughs> I actually wouldn't say this week is fine. This has been the week from hell, Donnie. I cannot get into many details, so I'm sorry that I'm going to be a vague influencer being like, pray for me, pray for us, without giving any background information. But it was the type of hard week where it wasn't my hard shit, but Mm. I was supporting somebody else with their hard shit. But I am exhausted because Mm. I am like, well, this is really hard on me. And obviously I can't say that, but I feel like sometimes it's harder when somebody else is going through a hard time because like if it's you, at least you get all the support. I agree. And you're allowed to cry and you're allowed to talk about it to whoever you want to talk about it with. But Uh if you told me something bad and I usually come to you with all my bad stuff, then who do I go to with what you're dumping on me? So then I'm left alone with all of this with nowhere to go. It's awful. Well, And that's why, Donnie, I do have to thank you publicly. You are the <laughs> chosen person that I mm-hmm, released mm-hmm. to. So I would take in the other person's hard things. And then I did send you approximately, and this is not an exaggeration, cuties, approximately 32 one minute voice notes. It was your very own podcast i did do it through the instagram app so at least Very you could listen to it yeah. at two times speed but it was 11 o'clock at night and i was circling around my neighborhood like a lunatic just shouting into my phone mm. to you and i <laughs> i enjoyed li- i didn't enjoy listening it wasn't good content but I liked the way you sent it to me. I think anyone that sends voice message should only do it through Instagram. So the person has a choice to do it at two times speed. Also, I liked that you were doing it as you were processing it. So it was like chunks of them. So Mm -hmm. I was able to listen to 10 in a row and then turn my show back on. And then when it was a commercial, I would pause it and listen to more. (laughs) I can't encourage it enough yeah well with all of these (laughs) iphone updates why haven't they made a two times speed option i don't know i can only assume it's something with the algorithm and they want you like in your text messages as much as possible Mm. i don't know i just always assume everyone's out to get that's a fair assumption (laughs) well on the flip side so i did have the week from hell but there were some moments of good in the week Mm -hmm, it was spooky mm -hmm. season it was one of my favorite holidays halloween and we threw a neighborhood halloween party for all of the the parents and kids and it was a total success I'm so glad I borrowed my bougie friend who is the friend that if I'm like oh this is a cool thing I bet this person has it mm. so I borrowed they have like a giant inflatable screen mm. that you can project movies on so we had a movie night outside we watched Hotel Transylvania and it was really fun it was great I had the time of my life in your blow-up pool with sneaker night playing however I'm about sick of everyone having all these cool things over when I'm not there. Nor rented a bounce house, nor <laughs> rented a sliding board. You have an inflatable screen. Not when I'm there, you know. Yeah, when you're there, I say, come on, children, gather around. Jump on Donnie. That's our entertainment for tonight. <laughs> I'm what you rent, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a, no, uh-huh. you blow up a pool for me and say, there might be shit under this. <laughs> <laughs> that is a true story, cuties. Well, I got in the pool and I said, something stinks. And Uh I think maybe I missed a load when I was walking around with my Food Lion grocery bag earlier, picking up that poop. But I'm glad the party was a success. How was your week? It was good. I went to that haunted house that I talked about last week. It was like 40 bucks and it was only 10 minutes long. So that wasn't really worth it if you go minute for dime or whatever the phrase is. I don't know if there is a phrase for that. There should be. I think you just made one. Minute for dime. (laughs) But I am the scaredest person on earth, so I still had a great time. Now, I will say I found a loophole to be scared, but not as scared. There were groups of like 10 that they brought you through into each room so that the actors could reset and be hiding before you came in. And I made sure I was at the back of every room so that when the jump scares happened, it happened to the beginning of the group. So then the actor would go down. But I already saw you. I know you're hiding behind that 
corn stalk. Okay, that is a good tip, but not if cuties are planning on going to a haunted house where they can be touched. Because you wouldn't be Mm. touched in this one. But if you can be touched, you want to be right in the center of the group. Because if you're in the back, then you will be the one getting a little Michael Darby grab ass as you leave the room. Well, that, I'm only afraid of jump scares. Mm. If they're out, I don't care. You can follow me through the whole house with a chainsaw. That's fine. But (laughs) it's the jump that scares me. Mm. I see. But that was a lovely time. And then I saw a film. The person I saw the movie with was like, are you going to talk about this on your podcast? I was like, I think it's too smart for both myself, the podcast, and the cuties. But (laughs) he was like, you should really talk about it. It should be mentioned. So this is me mentioning it. The movie was called Exhibiting Forgiveness. It was heavy. It was beautiful. I cried in the movie theater. Of course. But I don't know why I said that. Like, I don't cry everywhere. Yeah, that's also, that would be like, well, I guess you do this too. I was going to say, that's also like you announcing you've taken a shit but we do actually quite literally (laughs) talk about our bowel movements every week on this podcast we do but exhibiting forgiveness check it out it was limited run independent film it's not available to watch anywhere now it's out of theaters but when it is available check it out i told the other person i saw it with that i would speak on it but i'm not going to make it my headline because again too heavy did it make you want to exhibit forgiveness um no (laughs) okay i'll talk about it really quick just like what i would put on the back of the dvd it's about this artist and all of his art is about his childhood trauma and because he like painted it and got it out he's able to move on now and live his life he has a wonderful wife has a wonderful son whatever but then his father who's the source of all his childhood trauma comes back into his life and he learns he has never really moved on at all he just puts it on a easel and calls it a day but now that the father there's back in his life he spirals and punches holes in the walls and all this stuff oh, no. so then he finally has an exhibit at the end where he can truly forgive wow beautiful but again i'm not gonna break it down i don't think any <laughs> of us need to see it now because i think you just gave us the plot from <laughs> h to t as tyra would say well the movie poster i didn't know until the end but like the final painting that he paints that we see and we are fully encompassed by like, oh, wow, that is beautiful. I'm touched. I understand. That is just on the movie poster. Okay, we need to have a talk with Hollywood. First, Abigail and now exhibiting forgiveness. I'm not forgiving you, Hollywood, for what you're doing to us. (laughs) No, it's awful. Hollywood is worse. I watched another, oh my God, the best movie of my entire life I watched this week. It's called The Wasp. I cannot tell you about it. I'll read to you what IMDb says. I cannot tell you about about it, it, but he's about to. No, I'll tell you what the IMDb says. Because the IMDb was almost enough for me to not watch it. I was like, this is too vague. But it says... The movie follows Heather and Carla, who meet after having not spoken in years. Heather is about to present a very unexpected proposition that could change their lives forever. And that's all I knew going into the movie. Then I was like, this is the best movie of all time. I haven't loved a movie this much since I've seen Beep. And I'm not going to tell you what movie that is. If you watch it, then DM me and say, Johnny, what movie were you talking about? Then I'll let you know. But if I say what movie it is, you'll compare it going in. And I don't even want you to do that. Wow. Look at you. It is truly, you have to go in blind. It's so good. But then when I posted it on my Instagram stories that this is the best movie I've ever seen and I couldn't stop thinking about it and I did a deep dive XYZ, people were like, oh, can I watch the trailer? I said, no, do not, do not, do not. And that is what I'm saying. Why are there trailers out that ruin a movie going experience? I loved this movie. As soon as it ended, I said, that was the best movie I ever saw. And Quinn said, okay. (laughs) Well, I do think that for our Patreon or maybe our last episode of 2024 TGIF, I want us to go through our top movies of the year using my method of... Just movies you watch. Just movies you watch that year. So it doesn't matter when it came out, but if you watched it for the first time, I want that top five list. Well, you know the thing about me. If I haven't watched a movie yet, chances are there was a reason. So it probably will be a movie that actually came out this year for me. Okay, well, actually, that would probably be better to have the duality. (laughs) So you Mm. can do it the real way of best movies of 2024, and I will do my best movies of 2024, which are, in fact, the movies that I watched in 2024. Perfect. Because I will tell you, Daybreakers is on that list. Okay. One more thing I do want to talk about. I saw Bitch Sesh Live last weekend, their Halloween show. I do have some 
logistic things I would like to talk to them about. Well, here we go. What? This is the tradition I like to, I guess, inadvertently engage in where Donnie talks about somebody that I would love to have on our show negatively for no reason. So go ahead, <laughs> pitch sesh. If you're listening, first of all, we'd love to have you on, check your emails. And second of all, here's some constructive feedback Donnie has from going to your live show. Okay, listen, <laughs> it's not about them. You can tell that even they were over it, but I think they care about their fans too much that they'll never change it <laughs> where i'm telling you i am a fan change it so they had a costume contest and it was their halloween show so they asked you to go and basically bravo cosplay so i was a booga wolf kendrick was a swat team member that raided jen shaw's house etc basically me and kendrick wanted to go to gay bars after so what could we wear to you book? were like how can i do the mental gymnastics to once again circles become circles yeah. put on my werewolf costume that's it exactly mm -hmm. uh-huh but then there were people that were like Brittany from real Housewives of salt lake city her purse with bread in it. There was oh, like someone iconic. who was a sprinkle cookie in a trash can. I saw that Kara Berry was Tamara Judge mid facial yes. peel. Yeah. People really went all out. But then, sorry, cuties, if this was you, I apologize. Anyone that was in a costume, and this is a large theater, bitch, that has been around for like eight years at yeah, least. They were like one of the first Bravo podcasts yeah. to really like pop up. This off. is their seventh annual Halloween show. So they had the podcast at least before that. So a big theater. Anyone that was in costume could get up and go across the stage. It was literally 20 minutes long. In the beginning, they would let you take the mic and say like, I'm Donnie, I'm Tress as a Booga Wolf. And then you would spin around, whatever. And then once they realized that was going on too long, then you couldn't say your name anymore. You could just say what you were. I'm a Booga Wolf. Then after they realized that was still going on too long, then she was like, what are you? A booga wolf. She's a booga wolf. And then moved on, whatever. So they yeah. tried their best to keep it moving, but it was just too much. And they were like... Five girls that were dressed as Bronwyn in that heart thing. Mm. There were like three groups of friends that were receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, whatever. So if I was in charge of this, I would have someone... Handpick the best ones. Yeah, something like that. Or like everyone can walk across the stage, but as they are, Danielle and Casey are on the side and you say, come here, step forward, step forward. And then you have a group of like 10 at the end that the audience can cheer about who's the best. Oh, I like that where everybody, it's like a conga line. And then if it were our live show, we would handpick the ones that we think are the most iconic. And then at the end, it's like you've been handpicked to take the mic and say what you are. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Because I do want, one day when we finally do have this live show that we've been talking about for two years now on this podcast, I would love, regardless if it's Halloween or not, I would love the cuties to come in costume. I if would they as want well. to. But I would love, like, we've got a Romeo and Michelle over here. We've got a McDonald's shit bag over here. We've <laughs> got a plunger in the audience. Like, I would love the cuties in costume. That is a vibe. I would mm -hmm. love that. Now, I know I just shit talked to that podcast show for about 10 minutes half the length of the costume contest <laughs> uh -huh. but i will say casey and danielle came to see O'Mary the next day and i was a ticket taker so coming in i saw casey and i said the show last night was incredible and she thought i was talking about O'Mary, and she said I'm sorry, because one thing I need to tell you about Casey Wilson, she is, I think, a bitch, but it is so funny to me. She like snarks her audience and I eat it up when they do boots on the ground, Chelsea, where you can stand up and say like, hi, I saw Tinsley Mortimer sitting on the street, whatever. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> I don't Sorry, know. Sorry, Tinsley. <laughs> Should I add? Allegedly. <laughs> I love that Tinsley is like the least likely to shit in the street. That's Sonia. She's doing it right now. Look out your window. I bet you'll see her. <laughs> That's why anyone else doing it isn't news. But Tinsley, you have to report it. So Casey was like saying, we're going to do boots on the ground. She's like, make sure it's a story that you think is funny. And then she set the microphone up and she's like, let me retract that. Make sure it's a story other people will think is funny. <laughs> and then like as people were talking, she was like, oh, I love that. And tried to like cut it off. And they just kept talking. So that's another thing for our show. I'm just going to pull the plug on the mic if we do audience participation and they go too long. If we do audience participation, you will need to be the bitch because I will be sitting there like, uh-huh. Oh, wonderful. Great. <laughs> oh, no. I'll say, all right. 
<laughs> Wrap Moving it up. On. Oh, we should just play Oscars music. Oh, yeah. And if we really need it, we can get a cane and yank them off. That is brilliant. Uh-huh. Okay, I love that. So that kind of energy is what Casey Wilson brings into this world. And that's why I'm her number one fan. Mm-hmm. But I said, the show last night was incredible. She thought I was talking about Mary, So she's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, no, your show, your show was good. And she's like, oh, my God. So then she hugged me and thanked me for coming. Aww. And then at the end of the show, I saw Danielle and I told her, but then I specified. I was like, your show last night was incredible. And she said, thank you. And she hugged me as well. I love that. Now, this is where a business card would have came in. Uh, yeah. Or at least a bumper sticker or something. Right on her forehead. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all of that to say is we're on YouTube. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so go check us out on YouTube if you're not already. Oh, and if we're talking too much and you don't want to listen to ads on top of that, you can go to our Patreon and get ad-free episodes. That's fun. Super fun. Okay. So this week brought <laughs> us Octavia Spencer as Ma endorsing Kamala Harris, Nick Cannon sharing his insecurities about being married to Mariah, a roast comedian at a Trump rally, a teaser for the new Fear Street movie, Timothy Chalamet crashing a Timothy Chalamet lookalike <laughs> contest, Cynthia Erivo admitting she should have called her friends after seeing the <laughs> wicked fan art, Vicki Gunvalson comparing the Real Housewives of Orange County to making a deal with the devil, and the end of Zoe Kravitz and Channing Tatum's engagement and that's what you missed on Glee (laughs) I should have known about that because Zoe Kravitz saw Oh Mary three times the first two times with Channing Tatum the third time not Mm, I wonder if the plot of Oh Mary inspired her to break up the engagement hmm I don't know if you know the plot I don't (laughs) (laughs) Alexa when did Ma come out I'm seeing if it's 10 years She's not telling me anything. (laughs) So whenever Ma does hit the 10-year mark, we will be covering it on the day of, even if it's a Tuesday. (laughs) We're just going to have a (laughs) Ma release party. I've never seen it. You know that. I know. We're watching it next time, Margaret Fizzit. Okay, that's fine. But that is a movie that I had not seen and I wasn't going to watch either without you or without covering it because I've seen enough of your memes. I mean, you once photoshopped the Ma haircut on an elephant. I know how much this movie is important to your soul. It is. Now, don't watch the trailer for that either because it literally shows you the exact same thing, including all the murders. Well, I didn't know there were murders. I don't know anything about Ma except for her poking out from behind that tree. Oh, you don't know this either? Don't make me drink alone. Don't make me drink alone. No. That's how she endorsed Kamala. She said, don't make me vote alone. And then she moves her camera and Kamala's there. Brilliant. I got to tell you, I don't think that Kamala's done a good job at all. Perhaps one of the worst we've ever seen of (laughs) trying to bring in voters that weren't going to vote for her in the first place. But my God, whoever's running her social media outreach, perfection. We've got Ma. We've got Mary Catherine Gallagher. Mm. I hope that putting all those coconuts in one basket pans out for her. (laughs) My best friend's nursery or whatever it's called, wherever you send kids to school. (laughs) cage we put them in with a little (laughs) gerbil water bottle for eight hours a day they send like updates like oh tanya played ball with the kids today tanya took a nap tanya nobody's kid is named tanya by the way i don't know where that came from but tanya did all this stuff the note from school or whatever came and said today during (laughs) today during song time we listened to coconuts by kim petras that (laughs) song if you're not familiar cuties says, my coconuts, you can put them in your mouth. Well. Uh, Anyway. Woman of the Hour, directed by and starring Anna Kendrick, came to Netflix this week. And it is so good. Not my favorite movie of all time. That's The Wasp. But, Chelsea, I know how you feel about true crime. And this is why you're wrong here. True crime documentaries... Actually, I think this is worse, but I I like it better. So true crime documentaries bore me. Won't watch them. Don't care about them. True crime podcast. Same thing. Not listening. True crime acted out by a star that I love from other films such as Pitch Perfect. Sign me up. Do you know the plot at all? Mm -mm. There was a man who was a serial killer and people didn't know he was a serial killer. And he had the gall, the audacity to go on the dating game as a contestant. (gasps) So Anna Kendrick is the girl who's like picking out of the men and she ends up picking him. (gasps) Yeah. 
Oh, no. And then I did a deep dive after the movie, and it turns out most of the movie isn't even true, which is that's where your problem with true crime is. We're digging up all these people's emotions. There's about 100 women that were murdered by this man. We're just letting the family be upset that he's getting a movie. And then 70% of the movie is just fake anyway. Mm, Yeah, with old stinky poop face, Anna Kendrick. You don't like her face? Her face is beautiful. She's stunning. She's a Hollywood actress, but her face always looks like she's just smelled a stinky diaper. Her face Mm. is constantly like this. (laughs) I see. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I can't get enough of it. I want to watch it again. And I will say, to even out, because Anna Kendrick also knew that changing 70% of the story was a little tough for the victim. So what she Mm -hmm. did, so Netflix bought the movie for $11 million and she donated all of it to Rain and the National Center for Victims of Crime. Whoa. I know. It's like she saw how Blake Lively handled the It Ends With Us thing and was like, I'll do the opposite. Not going to be me, bitch. (laughs) Have you seen the headlines coming out that are the most egregiously hilariously obvious headlines that are coming from Blake Lively's PR camp. Uh -uh. There was one on the Daily Mail and I was like, you didn't even try Daily Mail. Like you didn't even try to make this seem like it wasn't coming from her. The headline was something to the effect and I'll put the actual headline up in the YouTube so that people can see it. But it was something to the effect of like Blake Lively waited her turn to dine at a restaurant like a totally normal person. (laughs) It's like, wow, you know what? Forgiven. What a normal person waiting her turn. (laughs) Oh, when that's the line, where are we? But that's really cool that Anna Kendrick did that. Al Pacino just did something similar. Did you see that? Uh Uh-uh. For his movie that came out, I think, in like 1980, Cruising, where he played a gay character, he's talked about Mm. how he doesn't think it was right that he played a gay character. And so he recently donated all of the money he made from that movie to various LGBTQIA plus organizations that's very kind of him i haven't seen that movie so i can't speak on it but here's my thought about straights playing gay here we go (laughs) if there's a sex scene i don't mind it because then you're putting in the work if you're letting me a gay man jerk off to you having gay sex with another man brilliant then you're just part of the culture yeah but if you are not if it's a love simon situation and you're straight and all you're doing is closing lockers and crying about coming out no you're not allowed to because that is where i think you're taking the easy way out the line has been drawn so hollywood actors if you're tuning in drop those drawers (laughs) i'll never fault jake gyllenhaal for playing gay in brokeback mountain they didn't even use lube all we had was heath ledger Spitting it in his hand. (laughs) Now that's an Oscar winner. Like I mentioned, (laughs) week from hell. We know that when I'm having a week from hell, when an upcoming election is coming, when the Menti B is imminent, what do I do? I just hyper focus on dumb shit that doesn't matter. And so if you've seen my Instagram stories this week, you have seen about 95 (laughs) one minute videos similar to Donnie's getting the voice notes. You guys were getting the videos of me talking about fairy porn. Circles become circles. We're back here. We're talking about fairy porn. I have finished the Crescent City series. So if you have not read it yet and you plan to just skip ahead like five minutes, maybe two minutes, just skip ahead (laughs) until you hear Donnie talking because that means his eyes have no longer glazed over. Okay, really quick, I will listen to you, but let me get this out into the atmosphere first. Is this the best I ever looked? (laughs) You look great. Thank you. I think you've been consistently looking great. I think it is the juxtaposition of the dehydrated toad that is on the other end of the screen this week. No, it's not. I can tell you that safely because I'm barely looking at you. I'm just... (laughs) I'm just looking at me. Hmm. Go ahead. I will. Now I am looking at you. You can see my eyes are to the side of my Zoom screen. Uh I am looking at you. Everybody on YouTube, clock those eyes. Let's do a (laughs) countdown clock for when they snap right back to the best he's ever looked. So the Crescent City series is about fairies. There's a lot of fairy fucking, but this takes place in a different universe and there's technology, there's phones. We're living in a world where there's like different class systems and then there are the people in power called the Asteri who are these all powerful beings who take over the land. But 
the twist is that the Asteri are actually like little parasites and our main character Bryce Adelaide Quinlan discovers that they are taking the power from the people to fuel themselves with the first light. Very timely. Make sure you're not voting for the Asteri next week, people. They will steal your power and your rights. <laughs> Jesus. This is the same universe as the other thing? Yeah, so there's this weird crossover event. It was very TGIF, like I was watching Boy Meets World, and boom, there's Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Because Bryce Adelaide Quinlan, who is just horrible. I mean, one thing about Sarah J. Moss, like Liam Neeson in Taken, she has a very specific set of skills. And her set of skills that she uses to torture people is the ability to write the absolutely most insufferable main characters known to man. Because Bryce Adelaide Quinlan could give Feyre our Michael's paint girl, a run for her money. But anyway, Bryce Adelaide Quinlan, she <laughs> ends up getting this magical horn, which isn't an actual horn, it's like a spiritual thing, but she got it tattooed in her spine, which then makes her capable of jumping through realms. And she ends up jumping into the <laughs> realm of the original fairy fuckers, including the best character of all time, Nesta. And then there's a crossover event where Nesta and Azriel are helping Bryce Adelaide Quinlan Defeat the Asteris. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the spine tattoo is where I looked back at what I look like. That's where you lost me. <laughs> but the thing about Bryce is she is a totally different type of insufferable from Feyre from oh, A how? Court of Thorns and Roses. So Bryce is the person at a party who is like always on. And maybe it is an instance of you hating others, the characteristics you see in yourself. Okay, so like there's this ocean queen who has the mighty power of the ocean. All of the angels are like standing up straight. Like she's just exuding power. And Bryce teleports on the ship and the ocean queen is like, what the fuck? How did you get on my ship? And this is literally what she says. She goes, I guess my Evite got lost. <laughs> Here's how I feel about humor in books. A lot of time authors. They're not funny. Yeah, they're they're people. There are people who chose to write in high school instead of going to parties. I was one of them. I'm allowed to say it. So, but I'm funny. But <laughs> I. But a lot of time, losers are what we're dealing with. Right. So when we have these losers writing for popular people or funny people or whatever, it doesn't come across as genuine. That's probably what it is because Bryce is supposed to be like this party girl, this popular girl. Nobody expects her to be this like very down to earth, bitch with a backstory, powerful being that's going to like flip authority on its head and change the world. So she's like this beautiful party girl. Like she's like a socialite in the beginning of the book. But yeah. So I think that's what it is, is that Bryce is supposed to be like snarky and like, I don't give a fuck about authority. But instead it's like dad jokes, but delivered by iced tea from SVU. But iced tea from SVU without any of the joy, like the worst parts mm. of Detective Finn is Bryce Adelaide <laughs> Quinlan. So that's what I've been doing. Wow. Well, I'm glad you're entertained. Does this one have fairy flapping wings in the background? I just listened to the regular oh, okay. Audible. This wasn't okay. the enhanced audio because I don't know what would have happened because these, there were werewolves, there were mer people, there and they were all angels. fucked too. They are all fucking. Everybody's fucking. The craziest thing is there's this character called Therian who is one of the mer people. And the mer people can come out on land and grow legs, but they have to go back to a body of water every so often or else they're stuck as a human, very little mermaid. Aquamarine. But it's come out now. Sarah J. Moss has started doing that thing that J.K. Rowling did before J.K. Rowling became a Twitter troll. Right. But when she started doing things like being like, Dumbledore's gay, or mm. they make their poop disappear because indoor plumbing didn't exist at Hogwarts, like just oversharing things that weren't in the book. She has yeah. now gone on to say that Therian, who is going to fuck, I think, in the fourth book, we haven't seen him fuck from his perspective yet, but... She has gone on to say that Therian's genitals are like a little <laughs> clam, that a penis comes out of the little clam when it's time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Under the sea. <laughs> if I was even thinking about reading these books, that sentence has stopped me. My penis went back into the clam, and it's <laughs> never coming out. So that was my headline. My headline was, Chelsea... 
close to mental breakdown, <laughs> continues to read fairy porn <laughs> instead of living in her own real reality. And I watched a TV show. That was- <laughs> Those were our hard-hitting headlines going into election week. <laughs> But we also talked about Ma, Kamala. I'm going to edit her with that wig. You should. <laughs> okay. My cutie of the week is Britney Spears because mm. as if this woman has not been through enough in her life, Billboard has ranked her number six on the greatest pop stars of all time. Not even top five. Do you have the top five? The top five have not been released yet, oh, but okay. based on Reddit, the only people left- Wait, let me. Madonna? Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston. That I got those three. None of those are in the top five that what? are left. I know. So that's the crazy thing. So we have Britney Spears as number six, not even cracking the top five. Here are the remaining top five that Reddit, they think Thanks. the top five yeah. are going to be. Beyonce, Drake, mm. Lady Gaga, Rihanna, mm. Taylor Swift. And you know who's going to come in at number mm-hmm. one. I'm so sorry to Beyonce. I don't know why I didn't even think of you. I think Beyonce, what do you call it? Transcends a list. Transcends a list. Transcends pop. I wouldn't think of her as pop. I guess she is, but she's so much more. She's Beyonce. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Who's your cutie of the week? My cutie of the week is Sean Mendes because he came out. Not really came out. He said this. The real truth about my life and sexuality is I'm just figuring it out like everyone. I don't really know sometimes and I know other times. It feels really scary because we live in a society that has a lot to say about that. So my kitty of the week is Sean Mendes for that statement. I think that all men should be willing to fuck men. So I do appreciate this. If all men fucked men, we wouldn't have to worry about donating our money to organizations, Al Pacino. <laughs> just fuck a man. I've always said that. <laughs> You've also always said there's nothing gayer than a straight man. And I really think that should be on a t-shirt, a bumper sticker, a billboard. It is very true. And now that the straight men are gay baiting on OnlyFans, gays online are upset about it. They're like, oh, they're just gay baiting. They're just gay baiting. Uh, they're still letting their friend tickle their butthole. So I'll pay $10 a month. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you're gay baiting. Who cares? Um, But this is kind of gay baiting a little bit. I'm not really digging deep dive into it. Nico Tortorella, do you know who that is? The boyfriend from Scream 4. He was also in Younger and some other things. Yeah. For the past like four years, they went by the pronouns they, them. And their bisexual wife also went by the pronouns they, them. And they were just a couple of people that had sex with other people, but also together, they, them pronouns live in their life. This week, he came out and said he's changing his pronouns back to he, him, and that he's never felt more like a man, blah, 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 all this stuff. So the internet is very upset by this. I'm one of them. I feel like I've been tricked. I had to look at you wearing skirts for the past four years when the reason I fell in love with you is because Emma Roberts shot you in the dick and scream for. <laughs> I used to go to Starbucks and say my name was Nico, for God's sake. Then you they them to me for four years only to come back and say, I feel a man more than ever. Get out of here. Where's Sean Mendez? <laughs> okay, a lot to unpack in that statement, and certainly we don't have the time this week, but I feel like anybody should be able to change what they want to change based Whenever on they want. H- yeah, if, however you're feeling. That's what he's saying, too. That's the direction we're moving in. So I don't have a problem with if you're feeling he, him one day, they, them the next day. It should be fluid. I hope that we're moving in a generation that kids never have to come out and kids never have to mm, mm, mm. say what their pronouns are. They can just say... I'm Chelsea, she, her, before you speak, like on Clubhouse back in the day, that Mm. garbage island (laughs) of an app. And then we just keep it moving. What I think is interesting is why would you want to claim feeling like a man right now? In this day and age, going into this election, you already did the thing. You already separated yourself from the Asteri, Mm -hmm. from those bad guys. Why right now are you saying never felt more like a man? I don't think that's the move. No, and then because all the gays like me were like, ew, you gay baited us, you gay baited us. Then he said, oh, look, the oppressed has become the oppressor. Oh. (laughs) Uh Oh, boy. I know. So that's Nico for you. Who was not my kitty of the week? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I don't know how we got here. Oh, Sean Mendes. Yeah, to highlight how excited I am that Sean Mendes is saying he thinks about fucking men sometimes. 
Okay, Maybe. so <laughs> I think that we provided a lot of value to the cuties this week. We mm-hmm. have we talked did. about what they need to do to get away with being a straight man playing gay. <laughs> Fuck a man. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And maybe don't be a man. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is my thesis statement. Yeah. And if your dick comes out of a clam, I ain't watching. <laughs> 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 and that's it. That's another Friday coming on. We will talk to you later. Love you like a sister. Bye. Bye.